So we're going to begin with uh, Christopher tutorial. Um, um, the way I'm going to run this is not to um, is not to lead everyone through um, step by step what we're going to do. Um, what I'm going to do is show you a quick introduction of how to get yourself up and running with an environment that we've prepared already um, for Chris Phil. Um, there's going to be, hang on, let me just sort out my. So here is the quick start version. So this is a very simple thing you can do, and I'll demonstrate this in just a second. Of setting up the environment, copying some file folders, uh, some files that we've already created. You can have a look at files to satisfy yourself with what's going on and see how simple they are. And then just run the script, and you'll see the indexing starting up, and that will get you started straight away. These slides I'm going to keep on on loop the whole time, so you don't need to copy this down just. Um, once you've done that, you can then, there are then two slides of things to try. So you can try merging reflections, calculating the completeness, sequence noise ratio, and so on. You can try splitting the stream into two, merging them separately, and then comparing the two, which gives you the R split and CC half. Um, you can try things like examining peaks in the peak search, examining the integrated reflections, examining the unit cell distributions with the unit cell explorer that we talked about earlier yesterday. Or if you want, you can visualize merge intensities using the red edge curve. Um, if you want to do the long version, um, it's very similar. You can copy the, the geometry and the beam files from the tutorial folder, same same folder, and then work through the tutorial on the Crystal website. So that's um, if you go here. Um, so again, either the link that we they gave earlier, or just type Chris Bell to your favorite search engine, and then just click Tutorial. Um, this tutorial is, is starts, for example, here with downloading Chris Bell format data from the CXIDB. So this, this part you can skip because the files are already available. Um, the rest of it, so it goes through step by step. So for example, getting a geometry file, well, that's in the folder, so you put it straight away. Um, and then you can fo follow that through step by step. Um, if you brought your own data, that's even better. You can follow these through as well. And um, the idea is that this is going to be a completely open session. So um, rather than keeping everyone on the same track, going through this one by one, I want everyone to play with the software, do, do what they like, process their own data, follow this, whatever you want. And don't be shy about asking for help, because that's why we're all here. So there's a number of people in the audience who are familiar with Chris Fell, if they could put their hands up. Any of you are? Yeah, um, okay, there's two in the corner who are not paying attention. Anton and Martin. <laughs> so, so, anyone who just put their hands up, please ask them, um, as well as me, for help. Um, so, I'm going to very quickly demonstrate the short version quick start. So, um, okay, so just as before, you need to log into PS Login, and then from there to Yes, Anna. So let me do that again for completeness. So make the font bigger. Make the font bigger, yeah. Sure. Sure. I think I'll just better. Yeah. Too big. Okay, so SSH dash X. The X is important because we want to have um, exporting. Um, username at Chris Fabian. So enter the password. Okay. From there, um, SSH again dash x to PS on it. So this is exactly as us for everyone So we're now on one of the interactive PS on notes. I'm going to change folder to the, the same folder as before, this scratch folder that contains everything. The files that we're going to be using are in this folder. Um, Chris Fell tutorial. So it's quite simple, there's not too much in there. Um, files.list contains, well, to start with, let's move this, let's make a copy. So if I go into my username folder, I'm going to copy 
everything. Uh, Chris Fell tutorial. Um, let me call it Chris Fell. Chris Fell. Second. Enter that folder. So now I have my own copy of those files that I can play with, destroy as I choose. So let's have a quick look at the at what we have here. Um, so files dot list. I'm going to use less. You've seen this before. Less is, is a Unix utility for viewing a text file. You're going to be using a lot. It's a lot with Crystal because everything in Crystal is plain text. So open that. You can see that it's just a list, one line per file of all the HD5 files that we're going to be processing. Um, if we want to know how long that is, it's useful. There are 2,000 files in the list. This I've prepared a short list. The whole data set, if you look in that folder, which is this called Scratch, the license I'm HD5, there's actually like 290,000 in there, but that's going to be too much to process. Um, in the time we have available. Uh, okay, um, we have a beam file. Tutorial beam. So look at that. Just as you saw in in my presentation earlier, um, it's very short. Um, it tells you the photons. Let's just make this a little bit smaller. Um, it's saying that the photon energy will come from the individual HD5 file. So you could have a number here, or you could have the path to the HD5 file. So you can do this. Bandwidth, divergence, and profile radius are useful for uh, are important for the prediction stage. Points. The profile radius actually is, is equivalent to Nick's um, mosaic block size. So the model is very similar. And fluence and radius you can ignore. Um, let's have a look at the geometry file, big and scary. Um, the count length in this case is, is fixed for this. Um, all the numbers are in SI base units, so this is meters. Um, number of ADU per electron volt. Now this is otherwise known as a detector gain. If anyone's not, if anyone's a bit confused by the term ADU, it stands for so what's ADU? ADU, okay, yeah. It's an excellent question. It's arbitrary detector units. And what's that? It's, it means um, in the image files, if the value in a pixel is one, that's one ADU. Now that doesn't mean anything, right? That's arbitrary. So what we have to tell it is how many ADU you get per electron volt of photon energy. How many pixels could be getting one? Um, so let, let's um yeah. yeah. So let's just open one of these images. Yeah. Pixel. So I'm running HDFC, which is Chris Fell's image viewer, and then file into one of these files. I do this might be a bit slow because I'm on the Wi Fi. Here's the image. Can't see anything, but I can go to view. Boost intensity, say it wanted. Okay, now we can see something. View, um, tools, view numbers. Click somewhere in this image. It will show us the actual numbers. So these are the numbers that are in the data, right? This, this array of numbers is the image. These numbers are in ADU, arbitrary to that units. Is that the raw file or is it? It's dark subtracted. Yeah, this is after going through Cheetah. So it's yeah, it's dark subtracted and it's well, yeah. There's no files back up with the ring. Yes. Yeah, you're you're seeing the gain variations in in, in the, the it's not gain code. So these files I should mention are the same as for the the lysozyme data set you find on the CXI DB, except that they've been reprocessed with a much more recent version of Cheetah. Um, so the files on the CXI DB have been um, background subtracted as well, which means the pixel values fluctuate around zero in the absence of signal. That's not the case here. So here we, here we see the signal. 
tiles aren't positioned where they are. Yes, yes. Yeah, so as, as Anton mentioned, th this is the the layout of tiles in the in the data file. So the geometry file tells you how to get from this crazy layout to reality. And the thing that tells us how to do that is the geometry file. So if I go to Tools, Load Geometry File, and then select that geometry file, hit Open. And wait a second, because it's going to be drawn. They should, yeah, pop into the real location. Um, this is only for visualization. So as Anton mentioned, we don't really want to create an image with the data in this physical layout. The reasons are, well, firstly, that the geometry might not be known precisely at the time when we have to do this conversion. Right? If we want to update our estimates of where the panels are, we would have to reprocess the whole thing. It's not what we want. With this model, all we have to do is change geometry file. Um, the second reason, reason is that we don't want to interpolate the, value, the values. So these pixels are not lined up on a, a nice pixel grid. So for example, if you, if you chose a pixel at random, it, it wouldn't fall. Um, it, its intensity would have to be split between two pixels in the, in the, the merged image. So we don't want to do that. OK. So that was a detour on ADU. <coughs> um, yeah. So each one of these stanzas here has the information about one of these little panels. That we saw. So it tells where the data, where the information for that panel is in the image. Uh, the resolution, this is the number of pixels per meter, which can vary from panel to panel. Camera input is less than M2, mm -hmm. which uh, that line will be filled. These are the vectors which tell you which way the panel points in, in reality, so essentially the rotation matrix. So we have this one SS or? Yeah, fast scan and slow scan. So the image in the image data, um, what we avoid doing in CRISPR is saying, for example, that the pixels in the image data are arranged such that subsequent pixels are, are in order along, say, the x-axis. We don't say that. What we do is say fast scan refers to the coordinate that changes most quickly as you move through the data. So if you move from one pixel to the next pixel in the image data in memory, you will move one pixel along the fast scan direction. Likewise, if you move all the way along that row of the image onto the next row, so you're one up in the other, that's the slow scan direction. And then we relate those to what that means in reality. So those are the coordinates in that first image that you put up? Yes. Um, corner X and corner Y are then where the first <coughs> the corner of that panel goes in space. Um, ADU per EV features there again. Um, anything that, that isn't doesn't appear here, you can just put it once at the top of the panel. That will apply to everything. It's, it's fine. It's sort of tidying up. Right. Second FS and SS, those, those are in real space? Please? Yeah. X, yeah. X and Y, yeah. So it's a vector. If you go in man, this one, don't you? It explains how this works. Oh. So um, it explains the coordinate system for x, y, and z. Yeah. So we, we just define this, and then we say how the data corresponds to this. I'm getting a bit distracted talking about geometry files, because in general, the CS file is so complicated that you don't want to have to do this manually. That, that would be really bad. So this is something that really has to come combination from the facility, conversion programs that we might provide, and refinements that we can do and that in the future will be done with the CRISPR geometry refinement tool, which isn't quite available yet. But it um, notices a lot of this live. Okay, so that's the, the geometry file. So what's a rigid group? A uh, rigid group is um, just a, a logical grouping of panels. So what we've done, you can define them any way you want, but what we've done is we said all the tiles that live in quadrant zero have are assigned to a rigid group Q0. So that means we can say, okay, give us rigid group quadrant zero. But we'll immediately get all of the, the panels. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, there's a geometry file. Um, 
we also have a uh, PDB file. This isn't a whole PDB file. All, all it is is this one line. This is the line in, in PDB spec that tells it what the unit cell parameters are. Right. So obviously, if you haven't solved your structure yet, you won't know the atomic coordinates for sure. You might not even know the space group. But after the lattice determination step, using the unit cell explorer, you will know um, the A, B, C, alpha, beta, gamma angles, and the centering lattice we only have. And these are the only bits that Christopher will actually look at. Um, okay, the rest is this script called run indexing. So let's have a look in that. You see, it's very simple. I'm not going to demonstrate how to submit jobs to the, the batch queue or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it very simple on just how you run this one. So if, if you're feeling keen, then by all means, submit this to the queue. It will work a little bit faster. Um, so we talked about this yesterday about how a CRISPR command line looks. So we have the program name, index and jig. That's the component of CRISPR that does bulk indexing and uh, integration. We give it dash i, followed by the list of files that we want to process. We give it dash o, followed by the name of the output file that we want to use. So let's call the output tutorial downstream. Dash j, followed by the number of threads we want. If you omit this line, it will just use one, um, uh, one it will no parallel processing. Whereas with 32, it will run the 32 analyses in parallel, which should go 32 cents faster. Than here. There's the list of indexing methods we want to use. Um, geometry and the beam file and the PDB file. Peak search method we want to use. In this case, we want to just get peaks that are stored in the HDF5 file by Cheetah because we trust them and we think that Anton did a good job of finding the peaks when he optimized this for peak search. Um, this is the location of the image data in the HDF5 file. If you leave this out, it will just find the first thing that looks like an image, which in many cases will do the right thing, but not always, so it's worth Specifying. And these are the integration radii, so the, the radius of the um, area around the peak that we're going to integrate, and then the inner and outer radii of the annulus from which the background will be estimated. So often you have to optimize these with it. And that's it. That, that really is all you need for decent visual process. So the quick start, if you copy this to your folder, and then simply run on that dot slash run the next thing. It's very important to read the initial messages that it gives you. So it tells you what it understood from your PDB file. Um, so it's important that it's found that it's tetragonal, let's say, uh, what was that? That it's tetragonal primitive. Um, it's found the unique access and all this stuff. And it's read the parameters correctly. So it's just a, a good to check that it's picked up what you think it's picked up. Um, all that stuff. This is a list of indexing methods we gave. It's just repeating it back to us. And then it will get on with processing it, and it will report every few seconds the progress it's made. So it's found just now 14 out of 39 images were indexable. So that means it could index them at all. It's found 14 crystals so far, and 12 images were processed since the last message. So what it says on the team line. By looking at this last number, you can see how quickly it's running. Notice that the number of indexable patterns is the same as the number of crystals. That's because of none of the indexing methods that we use can find multiple crystals at the moment. But if we were to use an indexing method that could find multiple crystal hits, then the number of crystals need to be the same as the number of indexable patterns. Um, yeah, question? Is there a reason that it prints um, just SI, yeah. Yeah, it was probably SI. Yeah. <laughs> it's um the units are stated, right? So that there's no possibility. Yeah, yeah, it's, just, it's a bit it's a bit weird. It it's, yeah, it's it's a bit weird. Um yeah, I, I could change it. 
but I mean, there's, there's tons of scripts that, yeah, it's probably, probably a bit of an error. Yeah, no, that's best not Historically, everyone was initially thinking maybe doing single particle construction. That was a good time. There's a lot of results like that. But the, I mean, there's, yeah, all numbers should have units. So the units are stated, there's no. Um, notice that it's, uh, it's saying implausibly negative reflections, right? So we mentioned this yesterday that if, if it says that means it's found a reflection that was negative by more than five sigma, so that it indicates that something is, is wrong. You needn't panic because those reflections are automatically filtered out, but we should look at what's going on. Um, we can do that with the integration diagnostic. So we say we want to look at reflections that are plausible. Try that again. Uh, okay, after a while this should come up with. So where are you getting the the dark inputs from? The part of the street mm -hmm. What do you mean, sir? Well the image you showed looked horrible. Yeah. All different levels and so how, where, where are the corrections coming from? In theory, they should all be done by Cheetah. So, so that would be the issue of five. Yeah, yeah. It, it assumes that, yeah, so that there was no... Okay. Orcas. Orcas, yeah. <laughs> there's no... There's no dark or gain correction in this one. That's assumed to be gain. So, I mean, if you have a moment, can you show us an image what, what the Crispo is seeing? Um, what I what I showed you before. You saw two. But all the modules are different. Yeah. That that's this this is a version like one point zero CS pad and it has these horrible nonlinear game variations. The, the reason is something like so it's a test my understanding out in front of the CS people. Um, but if you have these calibrated games in the geometry file, those aren't applied in that No, they're for the sigma conversion to Poisson, to, to photons. So they don't figure into the display? No. Yeah. Um, okay, this is Well, it, when you run with the in diag mode, it runs a single, single process. <laughs> the reason is otherwise they would all try to display their results. Okay, okay, this doesn't feel on the screen. I stop watching. It's going to come up. So, is there a tool that can show you a corrected image? Corrected is again changing it to proton units. So, getting rid of all the opposites for games. Yeah, Chriswell is assuming that the input has been corrected. So, if it's not correct, like if what you saw just now was. Unacceptably. Yeah, this is lovely. Yeah, that, that is as good as our correction is. Yeah. Really you can just go to Cheetah and save a bunch of versions. And then that just works with the default. I mean, the default is. Did you ask about 400 units? Did you? Yeah. Did you ask about, you want to see the I want to see photon the, units? Yeah, I want to see a photon scale with, with the opposite yeah. extracted and the game. Ah, okay, so corrected with. Okay. Corrected for game yeah. drops. 
Yeah, this is correct. I don't know about correct. Yeah. Do you have the answer? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is a Yes. This is this is this is what I, I have to do. Okay. I don't have a whole thing. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. not correct. In is Anton? Is this game correct? We did not. No, it's the lysosome reprocess. But it's from the first time we ever hit the CSP. I don't think it's any good for it. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. Wait, we don't do the operation that's in the past. Yeah. Every time we try one, we're going to do the operation. Yeah. That's something that fits the system. Yeah. There's a number in there called the gang. Yeah. Which you're not using at all. Yeah, we used to correct common mode. As well as the the box, and then I can use it. Because when you should be able to work out the game, it looks stable. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 not, it's not consistent it's from not the pattern. Consistent. This, this variance yeah, this is, this is what we're doing. Yeah. This is what we're doing. From shock to scale, we'll change, right? Mm -hmm. From shock to scale, we'll change, right? Yeah. There'll be tricks like smoothing it. Yeah. Right, so you can't really have a single game for a panel that you have final program, so that pixel by pixel one. So every pixel has a different game. You have two settings, and you have a little bit of a Right, but there's, there's a game setting, but then there's the actual game. <laughs> Which we would, we would have that. We would have that. Yeah. You don't need a black field, there's still a lot of data. I'm going to carry this all now. So, yeah. So, I would just ask if there's a way to display an image the way a crystallographer would expect to see an image. Yeah. Which is correct. I think what we would, yeah. Yeah. Use your best guess of how many photons landed on yeah. this pixel in space. So the answer is yes, but those corrections should be done in Cheetah slash Cass. And but if you have a geometry file with games in it, then HDFC, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I understand it doesn't do it, but that'd be unique. Yeah, so, nice so the, what I'm saying is that those those scanning values are only used for purposes of calculating signals for that photon correction. Yes, but if you to display them time. using the games. Yeah, so yeah, it, like that, it could do that, but it doesn't. Didn't we decide not to do the game correction in Crystal at all? I know. Okay, so, so waiting for that to finish is going to take a while. So here's one I made earlier. Just make this big again. So I've just got a stream file. I'm going to Yeah. So what can I do this? So, so I've got. I've got um, some things you can test, and I'll leave this on the screen and you can try them on your own. Um, but let me show you briefly, for example, examining unicell distributions. So this is really easy. All you have to do is run cell explorer on the stream we just created. So there's a short delay while it loads. Um, uh, it loads the unicells from the stream. And it will open the window. The stream is a big text file, so text and white. So it's not a big It's not not any, not two thousand anymore, but much bigger. Yeah, this this is the yeah, I press it like yes, fifty thousand. Um, so yeah, how do you? You can do that. Okay, that you can do. Yes. Um, I can do that either with a full on mask that will do that exactly. Or if I don't care, I can just say don't don't touch any of these aces. That's 
confirm in the joint so you can do it to okay now here's the window yeah like I said so these graphs, you can drag them around, so I'm just clicking and dragging. If you use the scroll wheel on the mouse, you can zoom in, zoom out. Um, if you press plus, it'll increase the binning, it's minus, when this is all in money. Um, if you hold down shift and select the region, it will show you in the other histograms what the parameters are. So you can see here there's a correlation between the A parameter and the B parameter. So if, if I have cells that are in the lower half of this peak, they're also in the lower half of the, of the B. Uh, not in C. So C is evenly distributed. So that might be interesting. What I would do right now is I would press everything and the values. Another thing you can notice is a little subpopulation here. So if I want to know how that corresponds to the other parameters, just select it. And you can see that this there really is a group of cells that seem to have a smaller one. I just noticed this last night. I don't know if it's invested in that. Again, you can click on and off. Well, when, I, when I write this, when I write the stream, I just write my list of the cells. Okay, so the, the instructions are all here. So I'm going to just put this on auto. Uh, auto repeat. And I'm going to basically stop talking now. And so we're going to have we've got like an hour and a half. So to starting with what I just showed you, which is all this slide. Um, and then I'd like you to try merging and also these things. And if you're very keen, you can work through the entire tutorial. Yeah, so any, any questions to start with?